Tom ask, can you tell us where you anticipate growth coming from over the next 12 months or so? Is it from attracting new subscribers or um, attracting analog subscribers to digital? Yeah. In the case of Comham, it's very much about attracting new subscribers, uh, turning people from analog TV over to DTV. Uh, in Sweden, I, I have 1.8 million households connected that are my analog customers, but I only have 660,000 DTV customers. So I have roughly 1 million uh, analog customers to, to, uh, to work with. And of course, that's a great opportunity, and that's really what we focus on for the moment. Okay, and how do you propose specifically to get those people to to digital, is it with high definition, yeah. uh, board? The high definition nowadays is kind of standard in Sweden already. Uh, it's, uh, we have used that as one of the drivers in the past, but uh, currently I think it's all about time shifting. Right. And we have clearly seen that uh, the, the Swedish structure is such that you know, people feel that analog is free because we have a landlord model that is paid for by the landlords. Um, so uh, they feel it's free and when it actually goes digital, it's actually an individual subscription. So suddenly they go for free to pay like you know, 20 euros a month. Uh, so you have to give them substantially that is the functionality that they feel is you know, uh, worth the 20 euros. Uh, and just doing linear DTV, uh, it's, it's not enough for, for uh, all, all people. And that's why we're going basically all in now on, on, on time shifting on demand services because we can clearly see that when people start to use that, you know, they really get the value for the, 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 the 20 euros extra they need to pay. So for us, it's about DTV, it's about time shifting. And when you say time shifting, do you mean via DVR or via an on-demand platform or yeah. catch-up service? In, in, in our service, it's really through an on-demand platform. We have been doing uh, DVRs for a long time, and it's, it has caught up some interest. But this is really about a, kind of a network of DVR, uh, where we actually, the, 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 the channels that people normally subscribe to, they have also within seven days catch-up service. Uh, and that's really what people enjoy. And then, of course, they can rent movies and they can do other transactional services as well. But it's all about the catch-up, I would say, that's attracting people really uh, to the DTV service. And in terms of broadband, Sweden's very developed in terms of broadband speeds. To what extent is that a competitive advantage for you as a cable operator over the incumbent telcos? Yeah. Uh, the incumbent telco is, is mostly on DSL. Uh, and that means, of course, that we have a substantial advantage in speed. And we have 1.8 million households today that can receive 200 megabits. Uh, and of course, normally the incumbent on DSL could deliver like 25 megabits. So that's a substantial uh, um, advantage that we have on that side. And of course, we're using that in, in, in bundles also with the DTV to have a really attractive product. But having said that though, uh, Sweden is also uh, quite advanced in terms of, of, of uh, lands and fi fiber built out. So I'm also competing, I would say, more with LANs today than with DSL. And LANs in that case is much more uh, up to speed with cable. Uh, so that basically means that you know, my TV product is, is equally important. And actually through my TV product, I can actually drive broadband services as well. So what used to be one of my main drivers, the broadband, is basically coming back now to the old, our basic business. It's very much about TV again, also to drive the broadband. Do you envisage a future where you're using that speed to launch over-the-top services and more advanced interactive multi-screen services? Well, I, we don't really need all that, that speed for the OTT, uh, because it's, uh, but it's, uh, the, way we th the way we think about it really is that we would like to have a user experience for, for, for our consumers using our traditional TV uh, or traditional on-demand services that is so good so that we can basically embrace all the OTT services so that it should be really easy to use also other people's OTT services from our platform. And, and you know, OTT in Sweden is a reality. Uh, so for us, it's more about embracing that and actually helping people to, to use those services than try to avoid it because it's like, uh, it's already happening because of the, the huge bandwidth that is available in the marketplace. Thomas, thank you. Thank you.